Hey guys, this is Project Dave, Lance Hitman Freelancer. This video, the audio is really scuffed, so I'm just going to talk over the whole thing, and it'll only be very faintly in the background, because uh, the mic was accidentally on, of course. But I wound up doing all the objectives here, and Sniper Assassin, essentially, which, if you're not familiar in the base game, if you kill every target, there's specific challenges to kill every single target in the game with Sniper. Uh, one of the one of the targets is in an internal area, so I can snipe them technically, but uh, still shot them with a sniper rifle, so close enough. But it turns out the lady in the sushi bar, and this this seems to be happening more and more consistently. I think they actually picked specific characters. They thought about each character they were picking. Um, Except maybe in, uh, what's it, uh, Bangkok? Bangkok has some pretty bad NPCs, but I've kind of stopped picking Bangkok, so it's irrelevant. So this lady never went and puked, despite being poisoned this whole time. She freaked out too much to puke, I guess. <laughs> but I did get the credit for it right there. But that character, she wanders near the window, and you can snipe her all the way on the other side of the map by the helipad. So that was the, the final snipe here. It's kind of a cool strategy. But uh, I just, just recorded a Monster Hunter video wherein I talk about the fortunes of Hearthstone. I think I'll resume that discussion here. Uh... But essentially, to summarize, Earthstone is in a bad spot because China's gone, and that's probably the vast majority of their spending player base, especially the, the whales. So they've put, they are allowing bots into the game. So a, a large percentage of the latter in any given mode, except for Arena. Arena has no bots, as far as I can tell. Um, so you can still play Arena if you want to. It, it's it's a terrible state of the game in Arena because of Death Knights. So there's there's no real reason to play Arena, but there are people playing it. Um, I guess because of tickets. That's what keeps Arena going is the fact that tickets exist. So, and I guess the Infinite Arena players, I don't know. Like <laughs> Infinite Arena, long, well... This happens with every card game. Infinite Arena is very fun right when the card game comes out. Once they get three or four expansions of power creep in, every game becomes about this one card that decides the entire game, or X number of cards that do that. And that's the whole game. Uh, so skill becomes an irrelevant uh, function, essentially. Oh, I didn't realize Yuki was there when I was doing this. Oh, that's interesting. Because she doesn't notice me. I'm one of her guards. Oh, it's because I'm in the adjacent room. Uh, that makes more sense. So Arena and Shadowverse, first few seasons, where I'm on the top 100 global leaderboard, which still exists because the Shadowverse leaderboards are permanent in the game client. So you can just look up where I was a really good player at one point in time. Uh, may not be good anymore, but once upon a time, I was good at the game. Uh, instead, I'm a Shadowverse Champions Battle Master. Uh, which is like a JRPG version of Shadowverse. Very fun game, actually. But, uh, and cards. I played some cards arena and got infinite in that. That was fun as well. Which is a World War II card game. Uh, I don't know if that one is deep enough as far as number of expansions to have gotten bad yet. Maybe it's still playable. I think that game has like 5,000 current players or something. When it's doing well, maybe 2,000 when it's not doing well or something. Uh, I think for a card game to retain its health, like an, an indie or a smaller card game, it probably needs like 200-ish players that are actually actively supporting it. But in the case of Hearthstone, it used to have, I don't know, two, three million players or something. Obviously, it's been nowhere near that for a long time, except possibly in China. We don't, we don't really know the China numbers. 
uh, World of Warcraft. I think oh, so. The easy way to figure out how popular Warcraft is in China is just to look at the worldwide. It's not that easy to look at this anymore, but it used to be. You just look it up on Box Office Mojo. Uh, the the percentage worldwide versus the percentage domestic. So for World of Warcraft, it made I think like. 35, 40 million domestic and like 520 million overseas, which I, I believe was the highest percentage of all time um, for a non Chinese movie. And here's where I noticed this I was like, oh, you can sniper from here. Um, so go and snipe the other guy, which does take a while to set up. And then come back and do this one and finish. Uh, sorry if the audio is still too scuffed. I did put it at 20%. So as long as I keep talking, it's probably okay. There's probably a multitude of echoes in the background, but they, they should be faint in theory. Um, for games that don't have that much spoken audio, the, uh, the reverb doesn't matter too much, but since this game has tons of spoken audio, it's like uh, dynamic audio is a, a big, big part of the game that will trigger the microphones like audio receptors or whatever. And it thinks I'm talking because the mic's on an accident. I haven't had this happen with that Hitman very often. That's where that comes from. I thought about buying the bat here. Um, the problem with the bat is after you use it, it's hard to keep it. <laughs> it is a prestige objective and kind of a fun prestige objective, but it's hard to save it between missions, so it's, it's kind of a one and done most of the time. Uh, I suppose I could edit this part to, to what I do the next time, because it's going to be a lot of this. Or did I already do this five times? I don't know. Okay, I'll be back momentarily. All right, I return gloriously. So the point with uh, with Warcraft is like 92% of the international interest in Warcraft is directly from China. So that means World of Warcraft has lost a large percentage of its revenue stream. Um, they could get it back, I guess. They're, I suppose their plan is to try to get it back, but you got to do it fast because if you take too long uh, the resurgence of interest will be limited at best i think while vanilla and that stuff probably didn't do as well in china so maybe that aspect of the game is keeping it afloat for a while the uh, the vanilla subs were like 60 70 percent of the people playing the game so who knows? WoW is not necessarily in a dire strait because there aren't really any pure competitors other than Final Fantasy XIV, uh, which I think is just a significantly different enough game to not be relevant. Same thing with BDO. Um, they don't really fit the same niche. They might also be MMOs, but they don't really fill in the audience that plays one of those games is not necessarily going to translate to the next player or to the next game. So, uh, with some exceptions. So while it was probably okay, Hearthstone, I, I, they'll keep making stuff for it probably at least for three or four years. But, uh, and I guess the esports stuff is still going on with Hearthstone. Like, why? <laughs> uh, first one was not RNG City in the competitive sense. It maybe could have caught on as an eSport at some point. Like if it was Shadowverse level of difficulty. There's the sign. Got him. Uh, but that never happened, so... I guess there's a handful of decks over the history of time, like Patron Warrior or Raza Priest that were that difficult. But they're uncommon now. So, <laughs> sleeping guy to alerted state in two seconds. 
And this is an interesting song and dance. I wind up taking the uh, the pilot's disguise because he wanders down here twice. Like he sees that I'm in here. The, the man's a civilian. He doesn't have a weapon or anything. He's like, oh, this guy with a sniper rifle's in here. I should come back later. <laughs> um, which I guess overthinking how the AI functions in this game is, is foolhardy, but I still found it to be moderately amusing, nonetheless. Here it is. Man's name is Nails. So he sees me get in the thing. That's how I know I can't just stay in there. That's why I'm out here ready to ready to murder. And also gives me a convenient time to give a, to put the sniper rifle away. Uh, I guess there some of the guys over here have assault rifles, but where I was on the map, they didn't. So don't have to worry about having a gun on my back when I switch disguises. The light guy tells the the dude with the gun to come in here. I think. Or they're, like, talking to each other. I don't really know what happened here exactly. He saw me through the door. That's what got him inside. But in theory, Nails told them that I was in here. <laughs> now he doesn't know I'm in here, but he knew at that point in time. He just didn't come in. Or he could have known. Uh, but now the word is that last known position was right there. They don't really tell you what your last known position is in this game, so it can it can cause some general all-around weirdness from time to time. But here, Nail shows up, delivers his disguise, and then I can just walk in the chopper after that. As a, it's a miracle. The more I think about it, the more I... I suspect playing Rise on the Switch is not a bad idea. Uh, mostly just to get a feel for the new monsters. But I'm going to have to level up monster my rank a bunch. Still low, all solo. Which is a little taxing. Oh well, that's okay. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Look at that perfect run. Sniper Assassin. Gun Crazy. I don't know what the deal is with gun crazy. How many different random ranks are there that just pop up every once in a blue moon in this game? Thousands.